Hi, and it's great to see here a lot of people who are interested in DevOps. And in my case, I would like to share with you some interesting thing we have in this month, how we are managing implementation of new services in cloud. Uh, we have with that Visma cloud delivery model that I would like to describe to you. And yeah, my name is Kate. A uh, little bit about me as a manager of Procedure Latvia development team. And before I was implementing a roster microservice. And when mentioning that is because majority of this is experience with roster. A year ago, roster service went to continuous delivery where actually each commit started to go to production automatically. And uh, I'm really proud of it and that's why it's really cool that I today can share uh, this story with you. And my background is product development, process management and release management, so quite close to continuous delivery. And uh, yes, uh, the main thing uh, of this talk is about continuous delivery. You know, two years ago, before I joined Visma, I worked in Apexite, that was called Apexite, we were implementing a leasing portal. It's a large e-commerce platform, including billing and invoicing models. And when our CTO was saying, I want us to go to continuous delivery. I want to have 20 deployments per day on the production. I was saying, no way. Just, just no way. You need to be nuts to do that with financial system. Come on, 20 times per day you are going to make releases on the production. So 20 times per day you will have incidents on the production because releases are not stable. That's a bad idea. Now, joining Visma and learning their way to manage it, uh, having roster going to continuous delivery, I can say now, I was wrong. Partially, but wrong. It's actually much more safe when you are on continuous delivery than if you have regular releases. And I want to explain you why, and that's what I really want to share with you. That's, that was my learning. But partially, there is not, it's not a golden plate. It's not um, what you should do all the time. In specific situation, for roster, it was awesome. For majority of our services, it's awesome. For rethink, it wouldn't be yet. They were not ready. So, uh, before I will uh, go deep into how we are doing it, just want to give a few words about Visma. Uh, Visma is a product development company, a large one, and we are doing uh, invoicing, um, ERP systems, HRM systems, so really mission critical systems. Uh, but here I want to highlight two numbers. Uh, this is one number. We have uh, we're a large organization, we have more than 8,000 employees and more than 3,000 developers. Now, if you would like to have some change in the way of working for 3,000 developers, well, you shouldn't expect that it would be easy, right? Oh, that would be uh, quite challenging. Another number I wanted to share, show is this, 70% of cloud computing at the end of last year. Uh, we have more than 200 products in total in Visma, so this number is high. I'm not sure how they were counting that, honestly, but we do have a lot of uh, cloud services. And obviously it wasn't so all the time. And around five years ago, this number was close to zero. And five years, it's not so big time to get to 70%. But again, 3,000 developers and 200 products. So they had a challenge, okay? We want to go to cloud. We want to move all our products to cloud eventually. But not just take and put. Well, you can do that if you want, but that's not what Visma wanted. They wanted to use the value of cloud. So the wish was 
We want awesome products in cloud. But to have awesome products in cloud, you need to have also awesome teams that are running these products in cloud. And cloud gives you a lot of possibilities, so they want you to have awesome processes. Great. It's a great wish, it's a great challenge, but we have. And we have more than 200 products and more than 3,000 developers. Well, you cannot come to 200 product owners and say, you know what, now you need to take your product and go to cloud. Just take and put it. Well, you cannot do that. You will have really a huge resistance because it's hard, it's not easy. More than 3,000 developers. Now, we want everyone to climb on the sliders to the cloud. Now imagine a queue of 3,000 developers, and 3,000 doesn't include testers, BAs, and everyone else, it's purely developers. Well, that would be mission impossible. And they realized it. So, but they said, okay, let's dream. Let's dream how we want to get awesome products and awesome teams. And they got this thought. Okay. In order for us to have our wish to come true, we want to have the teams that are fully accountable for the service in charge. Great statement. It's fantastic. What does it mean? Okay. First of all, we want to have a team that can build an awesome product using latest technologies, having great architecture, Managing technical debt, because it's product development companies, they knew if we will not manage technical debt straight away, we'll go to production and say, you know what, thank you, we published it, but now we need a year to fix technical debt, so thank you, goodbye, here you go, use it, but we'll come back to you in a year and we will fix it. So the wish was awesome team. So awesome team builds awesome product, having greatest process. We also want to have awesome team that can deploy this product and ship it to customers. Obviously, this ship, uh, this aircraft, it needs to fly, so it should be in the greatest quality. So to sum up, the team should be able to make a death in the best possible way, with the best process. Good, uh, we shipped it out, but we want to have a team fully accountable. So, we want to ensure when our customers will start to use our service, our new product, that the same team would do ops, operations. We'll do monitoring, how our end users are using the system. We'll do backups, you know, there are security patches that needs to be applied. Everything that usually is done by, uh, by operational team. But we want now to have the development team fully accountable, so they should do this. They need to do ops, but they need to be able to handle also all ops. Because you know what, sometimes we deliver bugs. It happens. And what we want to have is to ensure that the team that is handling our production and development will not look like this. Just to give an example, we have developers here. An officer, one developer, okay. Um, who from you know how to register incident and have access? Not bug, incident. You're not a developer. <laughs> and that's the issue. Developers, you can say now you're accountable for production, now you will do operations, but they're not used to that. They don't have even access to these systems normally. So, okay, we have dream. We want to have awesome team that will not look like this. Well, how to do it? What Visma did, it was around five years ago. Uh, Visma developed the Visma Cloud Delivery Motor. They understood that they cannot define one process that will fit teams that are developing 200 products. They cannot define process that would be okay for 3,000 developers. So instead of defining common processes for everyone, they developed a set of requirements and called that VCDM. Now, what they told? 
if you want to get your service on public cloud, you want to host it in AWS, in Azure, in Google Cloud, you need to fulfill these requirements. And it means that you need to become one of VCDM teams. <laughs> of course, these requirements, it's a lot of them. You need to ensure that you have continuous integration and continuous deployment. You need to ensure you have all the operations in a great way. You need to ensure team is managing technical debt, and so on and so on. Well, not many would like to do all this, so they made it more as a reward and with quite a lot of bonuses. If you are the CDM team, first of all, you are allowed to uh, host your solution on public cloud and use public cloud services. Uh, you are able to, um, to use uh, possibilities of cloud to manage your infrastructure and do it cost efficiently. What you cannot do if you are using just uh, our data center as an example. Now you don't need anymore to buy operational services, which is good. But there are additional bonuses like if you are VCDM, you automatically are ISO 9001 and ISO 27001 certified. So there are some bonuses additional. And in general, in Visma, if you are a VCDM team, it's really it's an honor because you, you made a lot to get it there. But as I already told, uh, new services Visma wanted to have in cloud. And if they are in cloud, unless there are some contractual obligations that you cannot do that, they need to be VCDM. So as a result, what Visma is trying to arrange is new products will be built with the latest technologies in cloud with a great architecture fulfilling really strong requirements to be awesome product. Now, let me now a little bit more explain what is VCDM at the end. Well, based on what they have explained before, I think it's quite clear VCDM is DevOps. <coughs> First of all, it's DevOps team because the team should be accountable both for Dev and for Ops. But also VCDM is about DevOps cycle about automate, automated DevOps cycle, about continuous integration, continuous deployment, and in an ultimate way, so at the end, it's about continuous delivery. So how it's working, how to get there? Everything starts with a team. We first need to assign roles, and we have set mandatory roles, for the CDM team. The service owner, responsible for the service we're going to put in cloud. The service architect, it's mandatory. Each team should have architect inside. Not someone who's coming from outside, but really inside. Infrastructure engineer, obviously, is DevOps team. Business analysts and developers. Now you can ask, okay, I don't see there are QAs. Uh, usually there are. My current team, as an example, have also uh, UX in in the team. Because there are additional roles which are where in separate people or they are spread out uh, between key roles, like security engineer. It's mandatory that in each team there will be a person responsible for security. Uh, we usually split this role between infrastructure engineer and architect because some part of security requirements are related to infrastructure and some are related to software. We always have Agile lead, you can call him Scrum Master, uh, test lead, test engineer, and technical test engineer. This is the guy who will uh, write automated tests, or is the lady. And we have additional roles, like who will coordinate incidents when they will happen, who will coordinate releases if we need to coordinate across teams, and the change manager. Now, we have a team, they have assigned roles. As the infrastructure engineer, is recruited if he doesn't, then we have a phase of kickoffs. These are meetings which VCDM uh, team is showing to us uh, their requirements. First of all, overall onboarding, how um, how whole process is working, 
and then requirements for each area the CDM really cares. It's development, so what are the requirements on your development process, test, how you are going to automate your test, what would be your test strategy, and so on. So they're not saying exactly how you need to work. They're giving you expectation, like you need to automate, and these are best practices. But not the process, they will not detail it to you uh, completely. Release is about uh, delivery pipeline mostly, and environments that we need to have. Monitoring, because we need to think about monitoring while we're still developing the service. Incident change and security. Now, each of these meetings, it's mandatory that whole team is coming. So even UX need to hear all this um, explanations on what the expectations. This is small part. Uh, Kickoffs is one hour for a team. Usually a team is eight people. So let's say uh, we have eight people multiply eight uh, kickoffs around 60, uh, 64 hours. When we have kickoffs, we are presented with high level requirements and then we receive checklists. That are called self assessments. I, I see one really boring face because he was going with me through that. This is a really huge checklist uh, with all detailed requirements. And again, it's not a process, it's a requirement. As an example, uh, for continuous delivery, we have maturity assessment. So they're asking us, okay, do you have long living branches? Yes, no. If uh, yes, well, you're a beginner, but you need to be at least intermediate in order to pass through this. Do you have uh, each, each build talked? Yes or no? Very simple. So they put it really requirements, what they want to see as a result. Continuous delivery. Then uh, it's more about delivery pipeline and automated this. Security and privacy. We have a lot of requirements in terms of security for the new service. Because this one want to ensure if we are publishing on cloud as a new service, we ensure it will be really, really safe. So here we have requirements like if, you, if your service is sending emails, do you have protection from phishing? If you are storing attachments, are you checking for a set of requirements? Majority of security requirements are go and read uh, OWSP check, uh, cheat sheets and check if you really fulfill it. Privacy is GDPR. We need to check all new services are GDPR compliant. And it's interesting, as an example, part of GDPR requirements are related to UX. So what we're doing here, we're taking again full team to go through all this uh, self-assessment. Now, I am demanding full team. You can have just architect and infrastructure engineer to do it. All together, it's around 160 hours for full team to go through the self-assessment. So if we fulfill the requirement, we are putting a comment. If we don't, we are creating a jury ticket to fulfill it. We have requirements for performance, for technical debt management, and so on. And then when we know what we need to fix, we are resolving deviations. And this, this takes time. I will show you how it looks at the end, so it would be very clear for you how far we need to go. Uh, but when we resolved, we got a service that is expected, then we have final approval. Now, this part is, first of all, audit. They're checking for fulfilled requirements. We're going through self-assessments, we're showing how we fulfilled. We also are receiving uh, training on incident problem and change management just before we're going to live to ensure we haven't forgotten. And simulation, we want to try it out, really. What does it mean to have incident, what we need to do? And our service is integrated with VCDM tools like monitoring, common reporting, and so on. So we have huge process that is needed to fulfill requirements from this month for new services while we are publishing them on cloud. Altogether, 
this process, if you are building a completely new service, it's six to nine months. But including the time you need to develop functionality for your service. Uh, if you just take your existing service and porting it to public cloud, well, some hero team managed to do it in two months. But they were really not doing anything else than this. Uh, normally, it's still six to nine months, to be honest, because usually you continue developing new features still. So, let me now show you how actually it looks when you get there. Now, let's imagine this is your service, this is your business functionality, what your service really is doing. Uh, first of all, we need to uh, build integration to uh, four standard services, authentication, customer, user management, and license management. Now, this functionality is needed for absolutely any service, right? You cannot have service without authentication. Well, you, you can, but it wouldn't be a business service that you want to give to customers. Uh, imagine now we have 50 teams in VCDM, so more than 50 services in VCDM. If each of them would create its own authentication methods, its own user management, that would be quite stupid. That's why we have common services. Otherwise, managing customer need to manage users in each service separately. Well, that doesn't work. So first, we're integrating our service to uh, these central services. Then, we also are ensuring that we have a possibility for navigation across services. Again, we have a special common service that gives us information about it. Our users have access to many services and in order to navigate from one to another is good, but they also need to have common landing page. So there is a separate service for that, and we are integrating our solutions there. Common help center. Well, we want to ensure that we have similar uh, usability across services for our customers. So this is the next set of integrations we are doing. And, of course, our service is not alone. It usually requires other services uh, in order to fulfill its business need. So, where we have direct integration to other services or to the message queue. Now, these are business integrations that we need to build. And this is part of requirements of VCDM that you cannot build your service with your own authentication, as an example. You must integrate to common one. But in addition to this, we need to have another set of integrations to common operational services and services which gives us functionality we need to operate our service, like localization, like logging, monitoring and alerting, um, like feature topping. This is set of mandatory services which we need to have. Now here are just examples of uh, what we can use for it, like external services, as an example, launch darkly for feature toggling, but at the same time, you can develop your own. Um, monitoring is mandatory to have um, up dynamics where you're using Bombsley, alerting, it's ops genie, and logging Raylock, but you still can have different ones. And they said just recommended. Uh, for localization, some are doing homemade something, uh, some are using uh, crowding service. So, as you can see, we have a lot of integrations that we need to build while we are building also business features. <coughs> so this is ecosystem of the CDM service. <coughs> now let's look on the development process, how it will look when you are the CDM team and you are already, you are ready. You are publishing your service on the production and available to customers. It's quite classical, so everything starts with a requirement, which is stored in Jira. Mandatory thing we have in VCDM is to have for each requirement acceptance criteria. And our product owner or business analyst works together with QA to build them. Why acceptance criteria are extremely needed is because VCDM demands extreme test automation. And acceptance criteria help our developer, who will develop the requirement, to write unit and component integration tests. And again, this is mandatory. 
You cannot develop a feature and don't have unit and CI tests. We are putting that in Git and developer is creating a pull request to someone else to make a code review, normally managed by Stash. Well, classic. While we have a code review in progress, Team City, where some teams are using Jenkins, but here we will use Team City as an example, is preparing a build, is running unit tests and component integration tests, and if, um, yeah, is checking that build is compiling. In parallel, we have Kubernetes team and SonarCube making static code analysis. Also, mandatory step mandatory requirements from VCDM because this is a way how we ensure service is managing technical debt. You need to define the rules for them. Some will be mandatory, so if you haven't fulfilled, you have issue like no pointer exception potential, then the builds will be will just fail. Here I have also flawless guards. It's usually not part of delivery pipeline but works separately like during the night. If everything is green, we have green builds, we have unit test pass, we have Kubernetes sonar cube saying everything is fine, and code review is done successfully, then uh, developer who is making code review just pressing approved, if everything else made before, the branch will automatically be merged to master branch. And that's important, we don't have other branches. We have feature branch and we have master branch. That's it. There, again, we are checking if it's compiled and if uh, all the union tests and component integration tests succeed. If yes, it will be automatically deployed to the first environment. Uh, we were using TeamCity and Octopus, but uh, some are using Jenkins or other tools. So this is quite a classical development process where Mostly we are just pushing for static code analysis, uh, for unit tests, and uh, yeah. All right, um, now let's look on deployment because here is the biggest point to get. When the developer will merge the change, it will be automatically deployed to internal test environment. Now, internal test environment is not integrated to anything, absolutely. It's stand alone. But you have seen how many integrations we have. We even cannot authenticate to our solution without integration. That's why we have a lot of, uh, we need to make mocks for all the integrations. Some are building uh, homemade uh, solutions for that. We did uh, some now starting uh, to use Mountain Mark. Quite cool tool. When we have deployed, we are running API tests and UI tests. Now, performance tests and load tests also are mandatory for uh, VCDM solutions, but they will not run as part of delivery pipeline, but will run during the night. If tests succeeded, automatically change will be deployed to stage. Stage is already integrated with all the rest of services, and there we are running integration tests automatically and checking if everything is good. Uh, depending on the service, you might repeat functionality tests on the stage as well. It really depends. In Roster we were doing it, in uh, supply request we were not planning to repeat fully. If everything is good, uh, then build is green. If it is red, it will scream to us uh, in uh, uh, in Slack, that hey, fix me, please. But we have a QA at that point, starting to make exploratory testing on stage environment, and at the same time we're developing automated tests. What happens then? When exploratory tests are done, we have the first manual step: press the button to publish the change on the production. Uh, it's not necessary to finish to, to develop automated tests. It's mandatory to finish exploratory tests in order to push the change to the production. And it's released. So this is quite standard process that you will see of VCDM just going alive to the production, just going alive. 
uh, we also had this process and we understood there are challenges with it. And challenge number one is in the team you have at least two developers normally, or it would be quite boring for one developer. And you know what? They are developing both. You cannot say, you know, you're on hold, you're doing vice versa. And as an example, first developer, he's making a new feature. And if you have bugs, that's normal. QA finds a bug, uh, so the uh, test is read. The second developer is making a bug fix for me, for production. And you know what? I need this change. I need it for my customers. But they cannot deploy this build to production because this uh, this feature will fail. So that's bad. I need this feature, really. And we have it regularly. What to do? Well, it's easy. If we will hide this new feature under the feature toggle, or in any other way, like create a new version of API and don't use it, then test will automatically pass because new functionality will not be activated. It will not work. So here, when QA will test functionality, he will test all functionality and it should work. Then the bug fix can be released. Because yes, there is buggy functionality, but it will not be activated. And we can deploy it to production. Fantastic. So our first learning that we had was make each new change on the feature toggle so that you would be able to roll out later changes faster if there are some, any issues. The result was this. All changes are merged with feature toggle, so all tests automatically pass because nothing has changed. It's all functionality still working. And we got a problem. I was agile lead uh, in this team, it was one of my roles, and I had the role of release coordinator. It's a small role, which is doing only one. Press this button. But as a manager of the team, in addition, I, I had meetings. But each time I needed to press this button, I was so scared to crush our customers, so I said, okay, I will deploy it, it will take 20 minutes, and then I will test. I will do small tests, five minutes on the production. But you know what? I needed these five minutes. If I'm sitting on a meeting, I cannot do that. So, the issue we had was, Kate, have you deployed to production? We agreed it's the morning, and it was question at 4 o'clock at the day. And the answer is, I forgot, sorry, I was sitting on meetings. Oops. So, at 4 o'clock it was too late, let's do it tomorrow. And number of changes just piles and piles and piles. So another thing what we have faced is, Dear developer, have you added feature toggle? Can I safely release? And the answer is, I forgot. Oops, that happens, that's normal. So what we understood is that we need to remove human factors. So we needed to remove me from the process. We needed to automate me. Why? Because if feature toggles are set, it's completely safe to go to production because these changes will not be activated. And this is what we learned about a little bit of psychology of developers, it's much easier to know that your change actually will go to production than to know that it might go to production. Because then you're just automatically each time trying to hide the feature, you will not forget about it, because you know, the moment you will press commit, it will actually go to production. So this is the result. Our resulted process looked like this. Any change is merged with a feature toggle, it's hidden. We are deploying it automatically to internal stage in production, if tests will succeed. We had really high coverage of automated tests, full functionality. Uh, that's why we were really sure that if new feature, if developer will forget to put feature toggle, or if he will by that screw up existing functionality, tests will catch it, and will block the pipeline. It went to production, it's hidden, and only then QA started to make exploratory tests and write automated tests. And when 
he or she is ready, we have new automated tests already deployed to these environments, then the developer can remove each toggle and merge. Automated tests already know about new feature and will check it that it really succeeds and it will be released to production. Again, automatic. Before we implemented this approach, each time my hands were shaking when I was pressing the button, I was crossing my fingers each time. After we did it, I felt so relaxed, finally. All my stress level just went away because it became really safe. And I really encourage everyone just do that. And I really encourage to do one interesting thing. Go to your managers and say, can you please start pressing the button? Because it's stressful. Because you really feel accountable. And this is great motivation to improve your processes. Seriously. Okay, uh, results. These are results for roster. As I told at the beginning, end of August last year, we implemented continuous delivery. Uh, it was six releases, so it was six working days, because we had one deployment per day. In February, they had 50 <coughs> deployments per month. And yeah, uh, snapshot taken 18th of August, and by that moment, they had 17 deployments. So one, two deployments per day they are doing. And we had maturity index uh, in this map across all the CDM teams and guys now are on gold level. They fulfilled almost all the requirements and in one month they will be on platinum. So I'm really proud of them. So some takeaways from all this. First of all, set expectations. Don't think that you can define processes for all the teams, but instead really Define clearly what are your expectations towards service, towards team, because it will help them to not forget. It will help them to not forget that, you know what, we will need to roll back. But we need to prepare our service that we should have possibility to roll back and to, to ensure that it will work with old version of, uh, of the front end, as an example. Aim high. You can do that, really. If you want, you can go to continuous delivery. You can develop awesome services. Just say what you expect and really aim high. And motivate, motivate teams to do that. It's super hard. I hated VCDM. When we needed to go to production, we were late, everyone were pushing us, but we haven't fulfilled yet their requirements. They were not allowing us to go. It was extremely hard to get there, but when we got there, I felt relieved, really, it was super cool that we got there. So motivate people to, to go so hard way. Use feature toggles. Now, that is something I love, uh, because it allows you to really be safe. And automate. Spend time and automate tests. Automate your delivery pipeline. Automate everything. We have a lot of tools now, and you can do that. And having that, you will get as a result absolutely safe, continuous delivery. So I really encourage you to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? You said you merge feature branch straight to master and then it deploys to test environment, yes. right? If it not passes tests, what do you do? You roll back or you just no. prepare the fix? Whole uh, delivery pipeline then is blocked. Uh, it's red and team cannot deploy anything else until they will fix it. So, but you never roll back, you just fix the bug always, uh, like if something goes wrong. Unless you are on the production. If we have this situation on the production, so we <coughs> passed uh, successfully tests on all the environments, and we went to production, and then we got a crisis. This is the situation in which you roll back. One of the requirements we have from VCDM, not more than 15 minutes of downtime, mm -hmm. 
not more than 15 minutes of customer data loss and not more than two hours, uh, no, 90 minutes, one and a half hours to fix critical incident. Now the trick is, um, let me just show you uh, this, from moment of, let's say, let's take this, from moment of merge till moment it will go to production. In roster it took two hours. We physically couldn't uh, fulfill a requirement of 90 minutes, mm -hmm. even if developer will do things like that. So, as a result, the only option you have here is to roll back, and roll back is in almost instant. Like two minutes, five minutes, something like that. Yeah, it's it's really easy. Uh, that's why on production you're doing rollback if you have critical situation. Here on the internal end stage, just delivery pipeline will be blocked till you will fix it. You will not be allowed to uh, uh, roll out change to production if mm -hmm. pipeline is red. And also, did you ever had issues with Sonar Cube? For example, you put some quality gates and then everything is fine, actual code is working, but Sonar Cube doesn't like something there and blocks it. How do you handle that? Depending on the way how team will agree. Now, I have two examples. In one example, uh, team, they put it Sonar Cube to warning. You're writing to me an email, you're creating an issue in SonarCube, but it will not block the delivery pipeline. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, it's working. If you agree that you will have separate process to manage it, because developers meant to forget about it. <laughs> and then you have a pile of uh, 300 issues in SonarCube that you need to manually process, create JDK. ticket. I saw another team, they were gigs. They didn't want it to have any issues in their code, so they put it in SonarCube, everything as a, uh, not a warning, but critical. So it blocked delivery pipeline, because they wanted to have perfect, always perfect uh, code. And yeah, they couldn't deploy anything, but SonarCube is working uh, before it's merged, uh, it's, work, it's working on the branch. Mm. not on the master, and that's why you still can deploy to master as the developers can deploy. So uh, that's a little bit easier, but this developer will not be able to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, more questions? Probably you omitted one more thing. You need to handle schema migration somehow, database or yes. maybe some other stateful services. So to have your rollbacks successfully. Yes, yes. Uh, backward and compatibility yeah. is mandatory. Now, uh, for APIs, uh, it's mandatory where you have uh, your API new version backwards compatible, where you need to create a new version of API. So this but is what working. if you successfully migrated your schema to a new version, and then you need to have a rollback? Database. Then you need to somehow to check, uh, or maybe automatically, I don't know how you exactly are doing it, because you know, your developers can commit some changes, let's say it's liquid base or something else, mm -hmm. but how do you test that it will roll back and roll yeah. forward successfully for all these uh, changes mm -hmm. back and forward? For database, we have a rule in VCDM, it, it's very strict, that we need, we must follow, uh, what's called this pattern, uh, contract and expand and contract pattern. So database always should be built in a way that you first have, as an example, added the column, you checked everything is okay, you then started to uh, use it, ensured that everything is okay, and only then you're allowed to, as an example, delete previous column. So our database changes must follow this pattern, and to update it you need to have at least three deployments. But so it's, it's up to developers, you know, uh, first but of all, how, how did you convince them to follow these best practices? <laughs> and how did you test that they really follow these best practices? Um, because it should be either automated the first control, is. <laughs> or you need to have a special eye on it, because you know. Yeah. Um, how do you prevent them from not following your contribute. strict requirements? Contribute. That's the only yes. way. Because you cannot, uh, we haven't found a way how to automate, and uh, it's hard to convince developers. That's for sure. Um, we had a lot of facts.
uh, for some of the places where you guys were disagreeing. But when you describe them, guys, we will eventually be here. We will be eventually on continuous delivery, so your change will go to production directly. It can be initially, ah, oh, we don't want it, but you can get them to really want it, to motivate them, that it's cool. Uh, and then they understand that they will have risk. And code review, this is the only way. Yeah, because as for me, it, the true hardest part in all this pattern is to convince developers to follow a feature public or branching by abstraction, and also to follow best practices of data, database migrations. So Automate this. They will have, so, uh, really do this. That's what helped me as a result. Because they, they didn't have any more option. I wish I had this. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to prepare your service. I was lucky that at some point of time I got full-time tech QA uh, who was just spending his time on automating tests and we managed to automate all tests. That's what allowed us to really save the situation, but we were on the safe side. And then, when we had it, we had delivery pipeline almost automated. To make this last step was really easy. And do you have any requirements, let's say, for how exactly feature public is implemented? Let's say, the set of libraries, or it's just if, then, else? Um, they are recommending now to use launch directly, uh, but what they have requirement is feature toggles must be at least on the customer level. So not one feature toggle, all or nothing, but on customer level. Uh, otherwise, that's up to you. So they're giving a lot of freedom for development teams. But then they need to manage them by themselves. Yes. Because if you have so many various feature toggling everywhere, who knows uh, how to, to yes. exactly toggle it? That's you know, why you they want to should do have a list of all possible feature toggling yes. solutions. With That's why you want to do this as soon as possible. Straight away, feature is uh, so when QA is uh, doing exploratory test, we usually have one and the same person who is the QA and QA. He's doing exploratory test, and he straight away is automating. Otherwise, this would just so basically work. every your team is following this. You build it, you run it, <coughs> Yes. Like all BCDM teams uh, and all teams that need to go to cloud, they all must be BCDM. And this is one of interesting things in Visma that they really pressed it. Okay, any more questions? Uh, yes. Oh, we have to. Uh, okay. Uh, how do you ensure or monitor the team to keep uh, be compliant? Okay, good question. Um, BCDM for these five years had the issue that team managed to go through this huge process and then, okay, we are not following this, we are not following this, forget about it. Um, what happened as a result, VCDM implemented what's called um, compliance review. A yearly process where uh, each team needs to prove to VCDM that they still are following the process we have a lot of reports uh, about uh, VCDM services, how many releases you had per month, how many incidents you had uh, for which you haven't created the incident report, and so on. And uh, VCDM uh, team is having with you a meeting. So again, they provide you a checklist. You need to fill it in before that you really follow and what are your deviations. And then you need to show it to them uh, and discuss what have you done, how you improve the process, for this year, they also demanded, uh, and uh, yeah, they, they are checking, now they are checking for two years, I would say. But it's not easy to be with CDM, that's for sure. Okay. You uh, had a question. Yeah. Could you show the slide with the development process? Uh, this one or? No, the, the previous one? Uh, no, 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 no. This? Yes, this. so why do, both of the developers don't have a mouth. <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, I can answer this, uh, actually. Uh, it's because, uh, let me go here. It's because I so much loved this picture that uh, I wanted to have all pictures in the same style and all pictures are from this author. 
I know I, I answered this question. It was not made in purpose. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. If you have some more questions, come directly in the break. Thank you very much. Thank you.